and another reminder of like this woman is booked and busy and 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 personality aside she looks amazing in clothes in it let's just admit let's just say it out loud this woman looks very very good in clothes like personal style maybe isn't for me but whatever but when she when she has to dress dress when she has to put herself forward in a magazine and get that editorial done she knows how to put that shit on she got that shit on girl she got that shit on so this is Kirsty of Lil Fischiel. The title is Peggy Goo Pressures Herself on the Heels of Her First Album. And obviously you see her looking... I'm not going to lie. This is giving me Susie Bubble vibes. If you know OG London street style, you know, phenom, she's kind of looking like Susie Bubble. But regardless, I'm loving the trim, loving the look regardless. The dress is made by Marnie. The earrings by Swarovski. Again, booked and busy. Like, could you imagine what her DJ fees, by the way? Not a pocket watch, but let's pocket watch. Could you imagine what Peggy Goo's DJ fee must be? She must not get out of bed. She must not fucking wash her pussy for like less than 100 grand. It's impossible. You couldn't probably get her to fucking brush her teeth less than fucking 250. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? She is booked and busy. So it continues. Let's read the actual interview because I'm curious to see what she has to say. Um... Interested to find out she's only 32. It feels like she's been around for fucking ever. So big up her for that regard. You got another real cool shoot of her there wearing um, head to toe Prada. Looking fucking phenomenal. So let's read the actual interview what she has to say. So, um, <laughs> what is your first memory? Okay, I love these I love these questions in interviews because everybody lies. And I would wish some people just like tell the truth. It's almost like the American Idol X Factor questions. The question is, what is your first memory related to music? And everyone says the same thing. Everyone's like, oh, when I was 10, my dad would be singing, um, I don't know, Phil Collins songs in the kitchen. My mom would be playing fucking Aerosmith songs on the drums. Like, it's always this nonsense. It's like, bruh, why can't you just tell the truth and say, yeah, I don't know. One day I was watching MTV. I saw a fucking Jamiroquai music video. And I was like, oh, shit, I want to do that. And I started looking into music. And I don't know, it's just the common story that we all have. You just discovered on your own. Your parents weren't fucking musicians. They weren't fucking, you know, uh, failed artists and shit. They're just regular people that gave birth to you doing their own thing. And you happen to find music yourself. Like, all these lies about everybody being this, like, my whole family's full of musicians. It's fucking bullshit. But anyway, regardless, everyone kind of makes up their own narrative. Tell their own story. Invent your own nostalgia. Imagine nostalgia. Big up Lucian Smith. Let's continue. Her answer. Well, it depends on what kind of music you're talking about. See, look at her. In her Korean household, everything was played from jazz to heavy metal to disco to pop to rap, R&B, funk, soul. <laughs> you got a lot, Peggy Goo. Um, well, it depends on what kind of music you're talking about. If you're talking about classical, I learned how to play piano when I was eight years old. Really? The, no way. An Asian girl that can play piano. I'm fucking shocked. What next? The violin? Before that, when I was six, I was in a choir. I don't believe that, by the way. Have you heard her singing voice? I don't know. I don't know about that. There's a song with Peggy Goo and, and Lenny Kravitz on, and it might be one of the worst songs I've heard in my life. That's why I'm hoping the mouth doesn't sound like that because bloody hell, their voices would make me sound like fucking Chris Brown. Um, before that, I was six in the choir. I was also playing this. I don't know what it's called in English. It's called a zig, um, a zing, like a gong. But if, so she she's she's bragging about playing the triangle in a band. Come on, Peggy, you, you're bragging about playing the triangle. But the first time with electronic music, I would say I was 16. Okay, thank God she didn't lie too much there. Let's continue. You're from South Korea. Do your heritage and culture influence your music? By the way, I hate this question too. The whole culture stuff. It's like, bruh, like, what? Huh? Hey, actually, does your blackness influence your... It's like, what? What's that even fucking mean? Anyway, let's continue. I have a Korean idol who I'm lucky to be friends with. Her name is Jung Jungwa. I've been listening to her K-pop since I was a kid. I think that's my first memory. Okay, didn't really answer the question. But anyway, it continues. What does being a DJ mean to you? I don't only see myself as a DJ. You see, I told you guys, I made the prediction that Peggy Goo is definitely going to go more down the artist way. So I expect this album that she's about to put out on XL Records to be more of a um, an announcement of her as an artist, unless as a DJ. That's what I predict. I think she's going to go full hog. Because I think Nina Kravitz and those type of people, they're, they're probably a bit too shy to really step out and be an artist, artist and like put a bit decks behind her. But I think she's probably a bit bored of playing, you know, 
of DJing. Obviously, it's easy money, but she probably would prefer to be a legit, like, you know, have music videos where she's, like, fucking dancing and all this sort of shit. So I'm pretty sure we're going to see that happening soon. You're going to see Peggy in some sort of choreography. You might see her with a tune featuring Lato on it or some shit. Don't be, don't, don't be surprised if you see her doing an Ice Spice remix. That's happening. Um, yo, one of them, so what she says, I don't see myself as a DJ. I feel, I feel like I'm more than just that. But a DJ is someone who's deducing people, who's educating people about music and is responsible for creating a really good vibes. You're one of the most powerful women in the industry. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I, was, I, I don't think she's powerful. I think she's infamous. She's definitely infamous. I, I, I'm not sure about powerful. But anyway, what do I know? Thank you so much for saying that. <laughs> I've always thought that myself. I've always known I was powerful. But people, anyway, thank you for reminding me. Um, thank you for saying that. I appreciate that people see it that way. I worked quite hard to get to my position. X for doubt. I earned it by not taking shit from other people. I believe that to be fair and i keep doing me to be fair the first bit earned you know debatable not taking shit from people something people don't give a credit for i don't think there's many especially especially the guys there's a lot of men in electronic music who hate peggy goo i find her fascinating i don't really fucking hate her personally i find her fascinating just as a as a person to observe from afar but i know there's loads of guys that hate her and are really jealous and shit but i honestly think not there's not many guys out there that could put up with the shit that she gets. Like, if they were put in her shoes, like, yes, the money's good, whatever, and the fame, all that malarkey, the clout, cool. But having to put up with the constant scrutiny, the constant hating. Because imagine, you know, already people in the comments are awful. Imagine the random, unsolicited, you know, unrequested, uninvited, <laughs> fucking abuse she gets in the DMs. It must be wild. So I don't think they'll be able to put up with it. So the fact that she always seems to put up with it, doesn't rarely claps back really in public shows up on time does her job plays like plays starry night like it's her first time you have to give her fucking credit most people out there don't do that sort of shit and couldn't if they'll put in her shoes so that's something that she should be commended about it continues the bigger i get i feel like i have more responsibility for passing along the positive message and being a good example that type of compliment only inspires me to do better to be fair to her also I have to be honest too. I've long said, I really don't understand why in the DJ culture, it's not really a done thing to kind of bring people up. You don't really see people like putting their arms around somebody saying, yeah, this is my up and coming person who I think is amazing. I'm going to take them on tour with me and I'm going to blow them up. It doesn't really happen. Um, the last thing I can, you know, unless they're in a relationship, right? Um, well, what's her name? Uh... Amelia Lenz and her fella, right? Amelia Lenz and her husband. She basically gets him gigs now because she's fucking Amelia Lenz. Uh, Daria Kolosova and what's his face? They play together, but they're, fuck, they're a couple and they were probably quite established before they got together. But you don't really see a lot of DJs kind of putting their arms around people. It's not really a done thing. Everyone kind of gets in by themselves and just holds all of it by themselves. It's a really interesting scene in that regard. There's not really a lot of a spreading of the love. But to give props to Peggy... She was the first person I see on her level go out of a way to bring people up because I think she's she's brought up for again, these people are legit in their own ways, but she's not going out of her way to invite she's gonna have a way to like put her arm around people like Sally C, people like um FKA 4A, have you say his name, and a few other people. And I'm sure that's definitely helped them in terms of getting other gigs, just making them more visible and shit. And that's something she has to be commended for because you know, this woman's making fucking Solomon money. And she's still spreading the wealth, which she doesn't need to do, but she's still doing it. So props to her for that as well. Let's continue here on this fucking shoot. You see her wearing another amazing thing as well here. Big up Peggy. Let's let it to load one second and we can continue. Where is it? Can I see it? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Is it going to look? Okay, there we go. So there's... Oh, this is a love... I love this outfit. Top skirt and shoes by Ferragamo. Yeah, she looks amazing in this Ferragamo outfit. I'm not going to lie um you continue how did you conceive your debut album i hear you coming out in june and again the big up her for the this is also refreshing too i long for the days of like proper album rollouts like she promoted this album way 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 ahead of time this is fucking beautiful to see for any musician any album is very important step in their career i have only done eps with three or four songs now it's my first album in my music career see another hint that she's going to pivot away from the DJing. Music career. More than just the DJ. Anyway, which is a very important moment for me. I have been working on this for a long time. So I'm kind of nervous and excited at the same time. What can I say? 
I will have to let other people to hear it and let them judge. It's personal. I've been working a lot on this and I'm influenced a lot by 90s music. I feel very excited about it. It will almost feel like giving birth to your baby. I'm really anxious to see it, to be fair. Um, I've said already my prediction is going to be more artistry based. You might see and hear a lot more vocals on it. I'm also got a feeling it's going to be very, it's going to be like a range. As she said already, she's into 90s music. I feel like it's going to be everything that she's kind of into. Chicago House, Acid House. Um, deep house whatever all that kind of variance maybe there'll be some breakbeats involved in there i think it'll kind of go on a bit of a journey but i think there'll be definitely a lot more vocals on it because she's probably going to step out and be more of a performer um in front of the booth instead of behind it do you feel under pressure considering it's your first album yeah but pressure is never a bad thing for me i pressure myself because i know i can do better after one album i'm probably going to think to myself i could have done that better but no no bad pressure yeah, just do better. She says, the reaction, the reaction to it goes no, no, no was crazy. I did not expect that. So when you get uh, a song like that, I do feel pressure sometimes, thinking, oh my god, I need to make more bangers like this all the time. But this album is not really about making bangers only. It also shows people my taste, the different genres of music that I love. See, I told you about genres. I knew it. My prediction's right again. To be fair, that must be kind of wild, isn't it? To just happen to again, whether or not you believe she does the tunes or not, but imagine you're somebody that gets lucky enough to just create two legit bangers in na 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 no it goes yeah it goes like and obviously starry night and um in such a short career already and you've got so much ahead of you to do it must be its own type of golden handcuffs because now people only expect bangers from you and maybe those are, you were just you know just luck thing you just happen to make two bangers back to back but you have other things that you kind of want to show people other sides of yourself other genres take them on a bit of a journey but they just want that boom 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 so maybe this is a this maybe this will be her time to kind of reset things and get things back to where it needs to be you never know another one did you realize at some point that you created a global hit with na 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 yes i did because for example in italy it was a top of spotify italy has been supporting my music since my first show in italy in 2016 maybe 2015 to be fair that's that makes sense when i first heard it goes like i still fucking hate it to this day but I was like, oh, this is fucking horrendous. But it was also the kind of song that you could hear be very successful. What's that fucking festival? I think it's like Kappa Future or something. It's the one, I think it's in Florence or something. It's like in an open air place. I was like, okay, those guys, those madmen in Italy who like to sing along to bass lines, they're definitely going to like this shit. And no surprise, of course, number one in Italy. So, you know, maybe it's not for me, but I knew for sure it goes like will definitely resonate with some people like that. I just think it's incredibly cheesy. And unfortunately, it doesn't have the same replay value as Starry Night. Even though Starry Night is quite corny to play nowadays, I feel like it still has a lot more replay value. I don't think you know, it goes like will will have the replay value in like a year's time, even. Do you know what I mean? It's going to feel very, very dated. It continues. Actually, even before I had absolutely any music out, I did it in Italy in 2011 at this fashion party. But anyway, go back to Na Na Na. That's a random thing to mention. Uh, I remember my song at the top of Italian um, top 10. I, every other song was Italian song. That meant so much for me. In general, Italy is one of my favorite places to play. The crowd has always given me good energy. It's funny she says that and she's also, you know, on one video with these people dancing on the stage like she's some lgbtq advocate because those italian festivals are known to be incredibly heteronormative right it's just full of just dudes you look at the fucking crowd it's just full of dudes all the same basically all dark hair all beards all black t-shirts gurning off their fucking faces so i love that her favorite place to play is italy <laughs> which is one of the most normie generic places to go to but yeah bring up pay you regardless uh let's continue here what else does she say Let's go along. There's her with oh ginger ginger Peggy Goo. K E B Peggy Goo. I'm not mad at that at all. What's what's the dress who's addressed by? Straparelli. Jesus. Imagine her turning up to a fucking gig in head to toe fucking Straparelli. Imagine that. Could you, like has, has there been a DJ who's actually worn couture behind the booth? <laughs> like legit couture behind the booth. Like her this outfit could be more than her appearance fee. That's a funny thing. This outfit could be more than her actual DJ booking fee, which is wild because, you know, her DJ booking fee is probably high, but that dress might be 200 grand plus or something. Fuck! Let's continue. Um, in November 2023, you did a really great single with... No, nah, that's not... Again, Lil Fischial, you're lying. In November 2023, you did a really great single with Lenny Kravitz. How was your first professional meeting? I, by the way, I don't understand why that song exists. I don't know 
why that Peggy Goo Lenny Kravitz song exists. It sounds awful. Lenny sounds awful. Uncle Lenny Kravitz sounds awful. Peggy Goo sounds awful. The beat is fucking awful. It's garbage. It's one of the worst songs I've ever heard. I don't know if they just hooked up one day and decided to jump into the booth. I don't know if just they got inspired by each other's fucking outfits or something. Whatever that song, however it came to be, it just needs to be thrown in the bin. That song is tr -tr -tr trash. So bad. It continues. When I first met Lenny, I was super... Oh, she calls him Lenny. Hello. Lenny. Big L, eh? Um, when I first learned Lenny, I was super nervous. I think he's the most hottest, coolest person in the world. I went to see him in Bahamas in his studio where we were jamming together. I actually went to his studio again in Paris, an amazing studio. He's such a perfectionist. He knows what he wants and he knows exactly how he wants things to be done. <laughs> I'm also like that. In the beginning, we were like, okay, you want to do this? What about like this? Where's all this compromising? But in the end, he was super happy and I'm very grateful that he gave me this chance. Okay, how do you describe your musical style? I like to describe my style. I'd rather let other people describe it. When it comes to fashion, I like to wear everything. When it comes to music, I like to listen to every genre. Oh, okay, everything. Come on, bro. Let's be specific a little bit, right? Let's hone in on what we like. Let's not say we like everything. I'm into a bit of everything. Like, come on, girl. Give us, give us more than this. I like, um, I select things, the sound that I like, I put it together, it becomes my thing, I don't want to put a label on it, I remember the first thing I started to DJ, I told myself, I'm going to be a house DJ, but most of the DJs that love, they don't only play house music, they play everything, but that's an interesting point she made there, and something that has always bugged me about DJing, it seems like DJs have to specialise, have to hone in on a particular genre, I don't know exactly why, and when this happened but it seems to be a thing you have to kind of push yourself as like a techno dj hardcore dj break beats, break beats dj disco dj party DJ. like you can't just do what djs did in the past and play based on where you're at what you're feeling what the vibe is it has to be a genre and it's annoying because i feel like for instance like burger one of my favorite clubs in the world even though they have different rooms in burger and panorama bar and people split it like Panorama Bar is obviously the house and Bergen is mostly techno. I don't see like a genre thing. I see it more like a vibe thing. So yes, they're probably split with genres, but it's more so a vibe. House music and that kind of stuff and more party, light, you know, loving, bright, smiley shit fits more in Panorama Bar. Whereas the dark, you know, um, atmospheric, journey-led things probably fit more in Bergheim. And same thing goes with the other room, Saul, how do you pronounce it? Different types of music and vibes fit different spaces. But in general, you'd think a DJ's role would be to figure out, or job spec, would be to figure out what type of thing works in what type of room. But it shouldn't be limited on genres because there's some disco tunes you could listen to that are very menacing, very dark, very somber, very depressing, that could probably fit in Bergheim. But just because it's disco, it doesn't mean you only could play in panel bar. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like the genre thing is lame. Especially nowadays too, because I feel like we don't really have a lot of like DJs that have great taste in music. A lot of it is bangers led. A lot of it is like what's hot in the moment, you know, whatever, jumping on a trend. But it's not really people playing the things that they love or taking people on the journey or kind of, as you said, quote unquote, educating people. But I feel like if you actually had a return to like no genres, and that people playing what they actually wanted to play, you'd see people, you'd hear people playing way more interesting things on the dance floor. That's just my hypothesis. I could be wrong. I could be right. Who knows? It continues. Speaking of fashion, what about your clothing brand, Peggy Goods? Peggy Goods is fashion, but it's more merch. I have many creative fans who like to, who want to like to illustrate or draw. So Peggy Goods is something that I'm doing to connect with my fans. Of course, I love fashion and the brand I'm into these days is Bottega Veneta. Matteo Blasi, the brand's creative director, is doing a really good job. I was in Milan for that show. Hmm, interesting way to end it. Um, I quite like her Peggy Goods brand. I think it's I think it's pretty cool. I'm not sure if she still does stuff with it, but I like that she has merch. Um, I feel like more DJs should make more merch. I like that her merch just isn't black t-shirts. That's one thing I like. It continues here. And I read that you also had a brand in the past, Kirin, the Virgil Abloh helped you with. Yeah, oh yeah true she had that brand in it what happened to that by the way um yes virgil suggested to me 
the company that he was working with. He basically went up to them saying, you have to work with her. I think that's New Guards Group. Um, that was my little greediness trying to catch two rabbits in one same time. So I decided to do merch on the side. My love for fashion is always there. But when it comes for me time to focus on music, I should focus on that full time. Well, she's got a lot of things that she could do. Post DJ career, she could literally get into quite a few things in it. So that's probably why it makes people a lot of people mad because you could definitely see her doing pretty well if she decided to, you know, do the fashion thing full time, have LVMH or carrying all these companies, put some money behind her, her front of brand, and push that out. That could probably work. I'm not gonna lie. So big up her in that regard. But yeah, um, cool story here with Leo Fischel. Check it if you haven't already. Um, she looks amazing. Really good editorial. I love the stuff that she's wearing. She styled, um, you know, in, she styled in, she styled perfectly. Um, great hair and makeup, obviously on the shoot itself. She's fucking dressed to the nines, and maybe a reminder as you know, she might not be the most technically proficient, amazing DJ out there. Cool, but one thing that she is is a fucking star. That's something that you cannot deny. And clearly, she looks good when she puts that shit on. Like she's got this, you know, statement piece, Bottega Veneta um, outfit on or dress from their latest collection that looks fucking incredible on her as well. Connections, obviously, with all the high fashion brands out there. She's fucking killing it. So big up Peggy Goo. Big up Blood Clark, Peggy Goo. You love to see it. You really, really do love to Blood Clark. See it.